What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and uh, I am not an expert on <clears throat> any of this new fangled currency that lots of people like to do, nor am a fan of um, NFTs. They, they seem like, you know, the small amount of good in that community um, seems to be currently being outweighed by a huge wave of copyright issues and stealing content and selling it, stealing YouTubers' logos and selling it wide variety of other issues where some of the like places like OpenSea, a marketplace that sells it seems to have this be guided by some woke garbage um, banning certain creators it's a huge mess are there things inside of that community that make your investment worth it uh, clearly there are but there seems to be an innumerable number of pitfalls uh, for people who i can only assume have garnered a significant amount of wealth in um, on the blockchain and have no problem tossing it around and things of that nature. People paying huge sums of money for a pixelated picture of a monkey. I've got no criticisms for it. I'm a guy that spent a lot of money on old video games. I've bought, uh, spent probably tens of thousands of dollars, maybe a hundred thousand dollars or more in my life on Magic the Gathering cardboard um, and sports cards and things of that nature. So I'm not disparaging the the crypto, you know, uh, space, but this certainly seems to be like a pretty spicy backfire. Uh, so this is via Gizmodo. Turns out crypto bros who bought, uh, the Dune book aren't even sure how rights work. Now the lore of this book, uh, is deep. And if you ever want to look into, uh, Jodorowsky's Dune, I recommend it. There's some cool documentaries on it on, on um, YouTube. It's, it's a fun story. Late last year, a rare copy of one of the pitch books, legendary director Alejandro Jodorowsky made to pitch his vision for the adaptation of Dune went to auction. I think the initial uh, adaptation uh, had like, was it music by Pink Floyd, Orson Welles? Um, I forget, you know, it was like, Mick Jagger, like the, the people who are like, I'll get into it later. It's a cool story. One of the greatest uh, movies never made, allegedly. Um, the book was expected to sell between thirty dollars and $40,000. It went for around a baffling $3 million, thanks to an ether-backed collective known as the Space Dow. Now they want to use the manuscript to make their own Dune. Spice, uh, not space, sorry, Spice. Spice House's overwhelming bid for the book, one of a handful of copies still in existence, some of which have already been partially made available online. There's scanned copies online for free, by the way. Um, before and highlighted, online before and highlighted in the documentary, uh, Jodorowsky's Doom was part of, watch that documentary if you're interested, by the way, it's really good. It's been a while since I saw it, but I think it was at the film festival. 2014 or 2004, 2004, 2014, one of those two. It's cool. Um, was part of a number of headline-making landmark auctions for collections last year. Rare copies of Mario and Zelda games, Comic 6 Spider-Man's debut in The Amazing Fantasy, and all more generated wildly overestimated record-breaking bids, which is great for everyone else who owned a copy, um, but also <laughs> question, you know, arguably overinflating. We saw this happen in the retro video game market. There's a, a great video series. Uh, if, if you could let me know in the comment section down below. I've shouted him out before on Twitter. It's not exactly a small creator, but he talks about how this um, Wada Games and other people are all kind of involved in uh, allegedly inflating prices on sealed NES games. It's great. He did two-part series. Very, very good. Um, so anyway, um, all more general over record-breaking bids. In part, driven by people with more money than cents, placing speculatory bids into rare collectibles as the next big thing. The Christie sale of the uh, Jodorowsky's Dune was no exception to this trend, albeit that it was one brushing up with another speculatory trend, and that, that is crypto-backed crypto DAOs, or decentralized autonomous organizations, pulling together millions of dollars from supporting crypto owners in an attempt to buy something and webify it in some nebulous capacity. There was a failed attempt to purchase the U.S. Constitution and plans to transform Blockbuster into a future streaming service by similar DAOs. And now there is Spice DAO. And the difference with Spice DAO plans, however, is that they suddenly think spending $3 million on a book means they own Dune. 
They wrote, we won this auction for about $3 million U.S. dollars. Now our mission is to make the book public to the extent permitted by law, produce an original animated limited series inspired by the book, and sell it to streaming services. You don't own the rights. That's not how it works. Um, and support derivative projects from the community. Now, Spiced Out attracted a bevy of attention, mostly scorn over the weekend, by reiterating their plans for Dune after the purchase. The first to make the book public with a new digitized copy, while the physical copy books are stored in fine art quality storage with professional insured service. It's admirable, if not previously mentioned, something that's never happened with other copies of the book before. The problem is the other two plans, which involve the Mobius Illustrated storyboards into an animated series to sell to a streaming service, and then also having done that, encouraging derivative projects based on the manuscript from crypto enthusiasts who backed the bid in the first place. Except, of course, Jodorowsky's Dune is still Dune, an adaptation of Frank Herbert's iconic novel. Purchasing a book of storyboards, one of several in existence, even if the number is low, and expecting that to transfer the rights of those storyboards or the story itself would have been like whoever purchased a copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 last year, expecting that they could go to Sony, direct Spider-Man, are we still doing home puns? Or perhaps you walking into a bookstore, picking up one of these re-released copies of Dune with the cast from Dennis Villeneuve's movie on the cover and thinking that you could walk up to Timothy Chalamet and tell him how Chapter 2 is now yours. This is a weird thing. If they had my money, look, I accept crypto um, because a lot of my viewers are into it. Um, you know, a lot of people use Brave and actually I get like every couple of months, I get like a couple hundred bucks from them. So I'm thankful for the Brave token. I'm thankful for um, the Library Odyssey token because that, you know, every couple of months I get a couple hundred bucks from them. Um, I don't understand it. And so I don't offer advice, but I do understand a little bit about IP and purchasing a book does not seem like it would give you the rights to uh, create your own copies of that book, sell it, and also allow derivative projects. That's not how intellectual property works. If we look at the original tweet, it didn't go well. I mean, you see, if I bring up this, some of the replies here, it was not good. Crypto Bros, a, cop a copy of a book? Is this my intellectual property now? 33,000 likes. They went from stealing digital art to stealing fungible art. I mean, <laughs> I don't understand how this... W I mean, this is a $3 million backfire. I, I don't understand it. I, I, I don't... I mean, of course, and if you look at the quote tweets, it's, it's a disaster. I don't really see anybody... And look, I'm open to be proving being proved wrong here. But... Underreported aspect of the hilarious Dune MFT thing, underreported, is that there are also discussion about whether or not to burn the book to enhance the value of the NFTs. There are other copies of the book. It was funny enough when the cryptos bros thought buying an NFT gave them the rights over the art, but then these MFers brought a regular old book and they think they own the copyright to Dune. I don't have anything against crypto bros. I think that they're probably a lot smarter than I am uh, many times. Be right back. Going to buy a copy of Harry Potter so I can delete the entire franchise. <laughs> Google Jodorowsky's Dune scans and enjoy a copy of these NFT bros JPEGs for free. That one crypto bro who understands IP, buying an original reel of Steamboat Willie, and then asserting ownership rights over Disney's entire IP. A big part of being in NFTs is not understanding how owning things works. Yeah, it might. You know, I think there are a lot of people with more time and money than sense uh, right now in this space, which is why the people that really get it are making so much money. They're sitting there just taking money from people. I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know if they were told that they would get the IP along with this. I don't know. It doesn't it certainly doesn't seem that way. Um, this seems like an epic $3 million backfire. Um, and uh, this dude bought a dude NFT and he thinks he owns Dune. I've genuinely spent 10 minutes staring at this. No, it really does appear to be true that a bunch of crypto bros just spent $3 million, 100 times the asking price 
for a book at auction in the mistaken belief that they would then own the copyright for it. Yikes. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.